Well, good morning. It is Tuesday, September 8th. I want to wish you God's blessings as we begin this day. In the name of our trying God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I am, as you can see, decked out in all my cardinal uh, stuff. I've got my hat, my shirt, and you can see I'm actually at what I always laugh about and refer to as the Holy Wall in one of the rooms that we have in our home. In fact, it's just a collection of uh, many things that I've accumulated over the years as a St. Louis Cardinal fan, including uh, a baseball that has a signature by Lou Brock, one of the great Cardinal baseball players of all time, who, as we learned on Sunday, died. Uh, but Lou Brock, uh, when I think of the Cardinals, I have so many memories of Lou Brock, uh, setting the single season base stealing record, setting the all time uh, base stealing record, you know, as far as a career goes, eventually, uh, that was broken by Ricky Henderson, but at the same time, all that he did, and one of the great blessings uh, for us Cardinal fans is when uh, our rivals, the Chicago Cubs, actually traded Lou Brock to us. That has to be one of the greatest trades, as far as our opinion goes, that has ever taken place in baseball. Because in 1964, when Lou Brock came to us, he then turned it on. He showed how he could run, how he could hit. He showed what kind of player he was and the, the, the kind of character that he had. And he led the St. Louis Cardinals that year then to a World Series title, a World Championship. In fact, my dad got to go to one of the games. You can see here, he went to the sixth game of the World Series. He still has his ticket stub, $4. Can you believe that? And then he bought a commemorative glass that has all of the Cardinal signatures on it, one of them being Lou Brock. Well, you know, when I think about Lou Brock, I also have one other memory. I'll just set that back up there. A uh, great memory that I have, and I'll try to make this quick, is when I was about eight years old, we would have like a Little League night where all the Little League teams uh, that could take part in this would go to Bush Stadium in St. Louis to watch the Cardinals play. And I still remember being there with my teammates, and my dad was one of our coaches. He's sitting next to me. And Lou Brock comes to the plate, and we are so excited as little kids. We're just like screaming our heads off, cheering, everything else. And then everybody starts to chant, Lou, 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 Lou. And, well, almost everybody. One guy wasn't chanting Lou, Lou, Lou. All right, here's my confession to you folks. You know, when I was a kid, even younger than that time, at about five years old, I lost hearing in my right ear, and it's never really gotten better since. It's actually gotten worse, but I didn't always hear things the way I should. Even though I had ears, I didn't always hear. And that night, standing next to my dad with all my heart and as loud as could be, I started chanting what I thought we were chanting. I chanted, boo, boo, boo. I know makes no sense whatsoever. I have no idea what I was thinking, but I still remember the look on my father's face who turned and looked at me and he was like, what are you chanting? And I said, boo, boo, boo. And he said, no, we're chanting Lou, 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 which of course right then and there made sense. Again, I had ears, but I wasn't really hearing. How true is that for us in so many different avenues of life, especially in our spiritual life? Uh, when we talk about having ears, even if we're not able to physically be able to hear, we can still read God's word. We can uh, hear it, so to speak, in other ways and in other forms, but we live like we aren't hearing. And it's one thing to hear, but it's another thing to truly hear as in to listen. In fact, it, you know, I think of one section of scripture where our Lord spoke of that. It's in Matthew chapter 11, where Jesus is actually, and I would encourage you to read Matthew 11 today. Jesus is talking about John the Baptist being the Elijah that was to come before him, uh, the one who had come before the Christ, who would prepare the way for the Christ. And, and as he speaks of John and talks about how there is no one greater that was born of women than John the Baptist and how he is that Elijah to those who believe. He then concludes in Matthew 11, verse 15 with these words. He says, he who has ears, let him hear. Of course, Jesus is conveying the importance of that message. But 
I think for me, it's a great reminder of how often, even though I have the ears, how often I don't really hear, as in listen. It's so true of all of us. I mean, you think about that, how, how we can show our stubbornness at times where we hear the word of God, where we've been given the truth of God's word, but either we don't like what we're hearing or we somehow convince ourselves that maybe it's outdated or it doesn't really apply to me or uh, anymore. We will come up with all kinds of excuses to not hear, to not truly listen and follow. But despite that, Jesus still comes. And he still calls us back once again and says, he who is hears, let him hear. My prayer today is that you call upon the Holy Spirit to open your ears, mine too, so that we can truly hear what God is saying. As we dive into God's word, again, go into Matthew 11, read what he has to say, read on after that. As we look at what God gives us in the truth of his word, let's pray that the Holy Spirit opens our ears so that we can truly hear what God is conveying, gives us minds then to actually take it in and hearts to believe and to trust and to truly follow. Because we really do need to hear what God has to say. Because you and I know there's a lot of other folks in this world that want us to listen to other things. But I really believe that today is another day for us to be called back by God once again, right now, to have ears that are given by the Holy Spirit to truly hear what he has to say. Go with him above man. Let's go to him in prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we do ask you for exactly that. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, work within us in such a way that we would have our ears open to your word, to the truth of your word, to trust you above all things and help us to be able to shut out all the noise of this world, all the babble of this world, all the opinions that everybody else has, even those who try to twist your word. Lord, open our ears so that we can truly hear, truly listen, truly understand what you have to offer and give us minds and hearts to take it and to believe and to follow. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, he who has ears, let him hear. That's my prayer today, that we will all listen to God. God's blessings.